The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. The first time you met Camilla Carmine, you felt as if a truck had hit you. Again. In fact, the truck hitting you was the reason you were in hell. So you had first an experience as to how it felt. The woman was tall, graceful and dominant. And the reason you met her was her daughter, Clara Carmine. You had first met the young demoness while you were gathering angel metal after an extermination. Your goal was to sell them to someone. It had been a dark, dreary day. One of the rare moments rain was actually falling in hell. And a lot of it, too. Clara was quick on her step, disarming you immediately, but faltering when you immediately handed over the leftover angel weapons you had gathered. And you started... talking. Turns out, aside from being the Carmine's weapon collector, she also had other hobbies. Hobbies you shared. Bowling, shopping, and most importantly, collecting plushies and you quickly developed something akin to friendship. Of course, Clara was always under Camilla's watchful gaze, so you didn't have a lot of time. But that didn't matter to you. Making friends in hell was difficult. Either people wanted you for your body, or wanted to sell you something, or wanted you to sell something, specifically your soul or body or mind, all three at the same time. It really wasn't a nice place. In fact, these were also the reasons Camilla's daughters were under strict supervision. But all good things come to an end. You had been playing video games with Clara secretly in her room while Camilla was out somewhere. According to Clara, all day. But she had made a surprise early return. Seeing your friend's face turn to shock and disbelief was immediately sinking your heart, and so Clara had shoved you into her closet for your own good. You were deathly afraid as you shivered. Inside the closet, you heard the two of them talk. Luckily, Camilla's voice sounded calm. You had heard her before, from other rooms, on the radio, had even seen her on TV. She always sounded so serious, but hearing her call someone sweetheart and treasure was kind of wholesome, and it made you smile. But that's when you heard faint changing words. I'll just put this in your closet really quick, sweetheart. Clara's no was mixed in with the sound of the closet door opening. With a face of surprise, Camilla stared you down. And from behind her, you could vaguely see Clara who had her face buried in her pillow in shame. Camilla raised a curious eyebrow. And then leaned forward. Tell her I didn't see you because you hid behind her coat. Got it? She whispered. And you blushed. Your entire body crammed and your heart stopped beating for a moment. Her lips had come so close to your ear you could feel her breath against your skin. She then shoved a grey designer dress into your face. It still had the price tag on it, and was most definitely the reason Camilla came in here in the first place. With a pounding heart, you watched her close the closet door, leaving you in darkness for a bit. I'll see you at dinner, Clara. After that, it was silent for a while. 
You are breathing heavily and panicked hand on your chest, hoping this would calm down your heart. Honestly, knowing the secret of angel weapons, you almost thought this was it. You would experience your final death. Quiet as a church mouse, you were then let out by Clara a couple of minutes later. Her face was sweaty with anxiety, while yours was as red as a tomato. You told her that you hid behind her clothes, which she found incredibly smart. Afterwards, Clara carefully guided you out of the mansion. Rome was. The encounter just didn't leave your head from there on out. Even Clara joyfully told you that Carmilla had decided, during dinner, it was time for her and Odette to maybe have a few friends over, if they had any. All you could think of was... Camilla. She occupied your brain rent-free, and it honestly tainted your friendship with her daughter a little, as the entire time you were hoping that the encounter with the closet would repeat. It had felt so... Exciting, so intimate. Even though it wasn't, you were just seeing things, right? Things started slow. At first, your friend's mother had a stone cold demeanor towards you. She barely talked to you. And the questions she did give you were like drills, trying to find weaknesses. Was she trying to find a reason to kill you? Though, as she realized you had no ill will towards her daughters, things became different. Almost warm. You genuinely just wanted to hang out, and she respected that. And she didn't respect many things. But it wasn't until you had come over at the wrong time and things became much clearer. You had gotten a text message from Clara to come over as Camilla and Odette were once again not present. According to the text, she wanted to go out partying, something she rarely suggested, as she preferred drinking at home over noisy clubs, though you weren't suspicious of the text, at least not yet as sometimes she needed a change of face, as she put it. And so you put on your nicest party-goer outfit. But when you arrived at the mansion, you found the gates open. The security guard at the entrance was gone. Before Camilla knew you came over occasionally, Clara always put the same guard in place, a false imp by the name of Sal. He was a good egg, always let you through, even manipulated security footage. Slowly, you walk towards the mansion's main entrance, and with shaking fingers, you press the doorbell buzzer. Seconds passed, and then they became minutes until the door finally opened and your eyes almost fell out of their sockets before you stood Carmilla with a stern, almost annoyed expression a towel wrapped around her like a toga her hair loose and wet clinging to her tight body your face turned red immediately what do you want? She barked. Clara isn't here, Beatrix. I... 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 I she... I... Beatrix was your hell name. It was quite generic, all things considered. Especially after Harry Potter, the amount of sinner-born demonesses calling themselves Beatrix had drastically increased. Camilla just scoffed. You can wait for her in the living room. With almost robotic movements, you shuffled into the mansion. 
The living room was located on the second floor, where the private quarters were also located. Everything on the first was for public crap. A dining room, a ballroom, servants' quarters for the three butlers the carmines employed, a library, and other rooms you never dare to enter. To not seem like you were here because of Clara's money. Breathing through your mouth, you sat down on the living room couch. Your heart pounding. You try to stay calm. With sweaty palms, you reached for your phone. Did you get the wrong time, maybe? Well, Sal not being there was a dead giveaway. Should have made you concerned. But just as you pulled it out of your handbag, a beautiful, delicate grey hand with white fingernails took it away from you. A shocked expression you watched as Camilla walked around the sofa, your phone in hand, sitting down next to you, still only wrapped in her towel. My f... She placed it on the glass table and then leaned back, an arm on the sofa's backrest. She stared forward coldly, The silence was deafening, only interrupted by your own heartbeat. You could feel anxious sweat run down your neck. This was making you feel all sorts of things. You were excited, but why? Casually, Carmilla inspected her nails. So, where's Clara? You finally managed to stutter. In the carmine laps, you bit your lower lip. The shadow of a thought came to you, and it was a quite lewd one. Do you know, perhaps when she, um, comes back? Later tonight. You could feel every fiber of your being pulse nervously. Well, I suppose maybe I should. A hand was slapped against your mouth, and you're pushed into the cushions of the sofa. Camilla, above you, straddling you with her thighs. You felt so hard, but her expression was stone cold. The woman above you could feel your quivering lips beneath her fingers. Don't you know her eyes function, Shiri? You blinked. As if I never saw how you looked at me. Her hand moved, turning, until her thumb pushed into your mouth. It pressed down on your tongue. In this moment you felt a wave of emotions. Seventy percent of them lewd, the other thirty percent afraid for your life. Your fingernails were fake, replaced by angel metal claws. You could feel how their sharp metal tips gently pressed against the flesh of your mouth. Practically undressing me. Her voice was somewhere between a purr and stone-cold mockery. I know that look all too well. Most of my own staff at the Carmine Weapons Corporation have that look whenever I enter the room. Was this really happening? Or had you fallen asleep while touching yourself? Other hand took hold of the towel. You curled your toes in anticipation. And then she revealed her body to you. This is what you wanted to see. Don't you? The towel slept on the ground unceremoniously. Her hand gen gently brushed over your chest, while her grip on your mouth tightened. I'm not one to play games. This is a one-time thing. To get it out of your system. 
got it. But then her eyes narrowed. Though, unless you can do what Clara's and Odette's father could do. Her eyes practically flashed with a hint of the amount of lust this woman was hiding under her professional exterior. She knew in this moment she could ask you to drink her piss and you'd do it with a smile. Thankfully, it wouldn't come to that tonight. With a tone as cold as ice, she said, Get me just close to Climax and maybe I can see this happening again, Shiri. What followed was an experience unlike any other. Her touches, her kisses, and the orders she gave you. You followed everything to a T. And you were rewarded with pleasure you never thought possible. This woman knew what she wanted, and how she wanted it, and exactly the way to get it. Her passion felt night didn't end just in the living room. And it was around 4 a.m. when you were heaving in her bed, exhausted. Glad it happened, and glad it ended. You had no idea how often you had gotten over the edge. And meanwhile, Carmilla sat at the end of the bed, in her mouth a cigarette. She hasn't spoken to you for the last ten minutes. At least not until her second cigarette, she flashed your glare, which made you sit up straight. Yes, mistress. C plus. And... Adequate performance, above average at best. You blushed hard. That was a C plus. What in the seven hands did you need to do for a B? Camilla reached for her nightstand and threw two plastic orbs at you, sitting up. Catching them, you inspected them. They were quite heavy and were roughly the shape of an egg. And were roughly the shape of eggs. In the back of your mind, a realization hit you. She had used similar ones tonight on you, quite mercilessly in fact. Without looking at you, Carmilla walked towards a door that led to a private bathroom. Keep these inside you until I call you next time. She said that so coldly, so nonchalantly, you almost dropped them. And yet you didn't dare say anything, as she hasn't asked you something, nor did she allow you to speak. You're free to go, Cherie. Until next time. Don't forget your phone on the way out. Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members. Especially my darling stewards. HuskyHD17, Bella Mare, MysticJade111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.